My old water pump assembly was in rough shape. From a wobbly drive wheel that wasn't engaging with the pump, to a housing with a chunk missing and a quick repair. I bought a new housing, an aftermarket water pump made by Stage 6, and a water pump rebuild kit. Those would include everything I needed to put together a new water pump assembly, and the process for installing the aftermarket pump is the same as using a stock pump. Before assembling all of that, let's look at taking apart the old pump, because I suspect that most people watching will be doing a rebuild and need to know how to disassemble their current pump. Begin by removing the clip that holds the drive wheel in place using a pair of snap ring pliers. Then you should be able to lift the wheel off of the shaft. Sometimes there's a bit of resistance because there is usually a pin through the shaft that engages with the wheel. In my case, the pin sheared off near the end of my last ride using this pump. If the pin going through the impeller shaft is still in place, remove it. Turn the assembly over and remove the three bolts holding the small cover on, and then remove the cover. You can use a pick or a small screwdriver to help you remove the o-ring from the housing. Just be careful not to scratch the groove that the o-ring sits in. Now the impeller can be removed by pushing it from the underside of the water pump housing. You can't always remove it from the outside as I did here. This one came out very easily, but you may need to press or drive the impeller out. Support the housing on wood with clearance for the impeller to come out if you need to apply force, that way you won't damage the housing. A seal puller makes removing the seal simple. It could also be carefully pried out with a screwdriver or wrench, but you must make sure that you don't scratch or damage the housing. Now there are two bearings and a spacer between them that need to be removed. Find a socket, punch, or other object that is just a little smaller than the hole that you just took the seal out of. Then the bearings and the spacer can be driven out with a hammer or pressed out. You could try heating the housing to 250 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit with a heat gun or propane torch, so less force is required for removal, but as long as the bearings are moving with reasonable force, I don't bother with heat for disassembly. Inspect the housing and cover for damage, and repair or replace as needed. Clean the cover and housing thoroughly before rebuilding with new parts. When you're ready to put in the new parts, start with the bearings and spacer. Find a socket or other tool that matches the size of the bearings outer race pretty closely. When installing bearings into a hole like this, you want to apply any pressure to the outer race. I chose to heat the housing and cool the bearings, but you may not need to. They can be driven or pressed in at room temperature, but it may require more force. I usually heat the housing to about 250 Fahrenheit when installing bearings. That should be enough to get the metal to expand without being too stressful for the housing or the bearings. It's also plenty hot enough to burn you, so be sure to wear gloves that will protect you from heat, like welding gloves. One of the bearings needs to go in first but I spray mine with free spray or an air duster held upside down to cool it just prior to installation. You could place your bearings and spacer in a freezer for at least an hour beforehand instead. Try to drop the bearing in as straight as you can. Sometimes they'll fall right in and sometimes they don't get far. Use the socket or tool that you picked earlier to push the bearing all the way down until it stops against the housing. You may need to press or drive it down to finish the job. The spacer needs to go in next, and that's installed the same way that the bearing just was. If heating, try and direct the heat at the housing instead of the installed bearing. Then cool the spacer and place it in and push or tap it down until it sits up against the bearing.
The second bearing goes in the same way, all the way up against the spacer. Normally, the bearing installation would be complete, but I found that the outermost bearing would fall out with just a tap to the housing. This is not a normal issue, but I thought I'd show you anyway just in case it helps somebody. I took precision measurements of the housing's inside diameter in that area, and of the bearing's outside diameter, and it looks like the housing was made one to two thousandths of an inch larger than it should have been. I could have probably returned it, but I had some one thousandth of an inch thick shim stock around, so I cut a piece to fit around the bearing and reinstalled the bearing into the housing. That time it went in securely, with roughly one thousandth of an inch of interference fit, and I could move on. Now the cover can be flipped over, and the impeller seal can be installed. Put a small amount of grease on the inner lip, and then start it in the bore. In many applications we install seals so the flat side is facing us, but in this case the flat side should go in toward the bearings as shown. It can usually be pushed in by hand. But if not, it can be gently tapped into place with a rubber or plastic mallet until it sits flush. Next, the impeller can be installed. You can coat the shaft lightly with grease, then push it through the seal and bearings as shown. Again, sometimes it will require a tap with a soft mallet to get it all the way in. Make sure the impeller rotates with ease before moving on. Coat the cover o-ring lightly with grease and install it into the groove in the housing, then wipe off any excess grease once it's in place. Install the cover and start the bolts by hand. Then torque the bolts to 5 foot-pounds or 60 inch-pounds. Turn the cover over and slide the drive pin through the impeller shaft. The drive wheel has a groove that will engage with the drive pin, so make sure the pin is roughly centered and then slide the wheel onto the shaft so that its groove aligns with the drive pin and apply a little pressure until the pin sits in the wheel. Use snap ring pliers to install the clip that keeps the drive wheel on the shaft and then make sure the wheel is secure and that rotating it spins the impeller as well. Now your freshly rebuilt pump assembly is ready to go. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.